Dateline NBC correspondent Keith Morrison is joining us now. Keith, this is a fascinating and horrifying case. And in this episode tonight, you have exclusive reporting on the alleged murder weapon and the suspect. Can you give us a sense of the reveals viewers can expect this evening? Yeah, this is a very disturbing story, as you say. And we have, uh, it, it, we have kind of waded through um, the picket fences <laughs> to get to the kind of information we're looking for. Partly because it's uh, it, the information flow has been has been shut down as much as possible, given the fact that there was so much misinformation out there. Um, our information about the K-Bar knife and how he came to have it, about the nature of those traffic stops, about what was going on in his home, about what occurred at WSU where he was a teaching assistant, um, are all fascinating material and will certainly contribute to, to uh, the case against uh, Brian Coburn. Uh, whether or not he's found guilty. And he was just indicted by a grand jury this week, which means it skips the preliminary hearing, goes basically straight to trial. You may know this, Keith. Washington State University, WSU, is my alma mater in the small rural town of Pullman, Washington, which for me was such a feel-good place during my time there. So it makes it all the more difficult to wrap my head around this, this huge tragedy. You explored Koberger's time there. Let's, let's show a clip. Koberger and that knife traveled 2,500 miles until he reached his new home in Pullman, Washington and Washington State University, where he would study for his doctorate in criminology. Is it the kind of place where a person would want to go to do a PhD? Yes, it is. This is retired FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer. She's followed the case closely. Not that many schools have all three levels, you know, the bachelor's, the master's, and the PhD and it's mm -hmm. pretty well regarded. So perhaps that reputation is what drew Koberger West, or maybe something else. Whoever it is that committed these murders, it's like being a casting agent that goes out to find someone who looks the part. So the guest is at the end of the clip there, Dr. Gary Brucato, a forensic pathologist you spoke with. What other thoughts did he share with you about the crime and the suspect? Well, he's a very interesting fellow. He's developed the uh, Columbia University's uh, mass murder database and has a tremendous amount of information about the kind of uh, murderers behind the sort of crimes that we have seen here um, and, and what drives them to that kind of behavior, whether or not it was uh, Brian Koberger, it was, you know, somebody who uh, had built up uh, a, a lot of resentments over the course of his life, who felt uh, underappreciated, underloved, was probably... Uh, socially awkward, found it difficult to be in crowds, to be with people, uh, had unusual behaviors, and uh, was looking to level the playing field. Um, uh, and along the way would have quite a number of dissociative uh, episodes. We have seen evidence uh, in Brian Koberger's case of uh, him writing about having visual snow and that sort of thing, which is a, a kind of a condition that that, that people uh, who are troubled by uh, mm. uh, another issues do experience. 